My name is Ryan Kahlo. I am the Director for Robotics and for Privacy at the Center for Internet and Society at Stanford Law School. We're at the point of personal robotics today that we were with personal computers uh, in like the late 70s, early 80s. Today you have robots that would be very useful to have in your home, like they fold laundry, <laughs> they can grab you a beer, but they're just so expensive. I think it could be an enormously transformative force. Think of all the people that if they had a fully autonomous vehicle, um, that they would have increased mobility. People who are too young or too old, who are disabled. Think about the lives that could be saved, potentially, if a drunk driver could just get into the car and hit, hit a button. As different kinds of robotic technologies um, become more mainstream, I think that regulators will face a lot of different kinds of challenges. With respect to driverless cars, we need to figure out how safe do they have to be before they're allowed to be on the road. So I'm, I'm overall um, really encouraged by the great things I think robotics will be able to do. do. I, I am actually worried though about the privacy angle. It just makes it easier to observe others. Hackers might be able to get into the robot and see your house. And not just see your house, but also move things around and actually control the robot. The other sophisticated group of people to worry about though is potentially the government. So just as the government would be able to get a court order to turn on your OnStar in your car and listen to your conversations, so could they also do that uh, with a personal or service robot. But the third and maybe most interesting way in which robotics implicates privacy is the fact that these things are so anthropomorphic, right? I mean, they feel to us like people. And in fact, we're very much hardwired to react to anthropomorphic technology like robots as though a person were really there. Yes. Just take a seat and listen to me. That means that if there are robots in your house, if you have an app like Siri on your iPhone that seems like you're having a conversation with a person, maybe that will affect your opportunities for solitude. It doesn't mean that we can't use these technologies, that they're not good and useful. It just means we have to be very conscious of how to design them so that people still have opportunities for solitude.